Welcome to South Aussie Shooting Channel. Today's review is about the Smith & Weston 686 6 inch stainless six shot. This is a Dash 3 model. This is built in 1989. It's standard from the factory, but this one has a trigger job on it uh, to lighten up the trigger and spring so it would have a spring kit in it. This is the full length shroud with the normal front sight. It has the adjustable sights. This is pretty old. This is unloaded six shot as you can see here. Very smooth operation. When closing a revolver, pushing on the crane and moving the cylinder up so it locks. It's a proper revolver etiquette. Um, so this is a double action, single action revolver. The rubber grips that become standard. Has the Smith & Weston logo on the side. Has the thumb cylinder release by pushing forward and pushing with your left hand outwards you can see down here you can identify what model revolver it is and your serial number it has the Smith & Weston stamped to the side of it. it has the barrel here you have the front sight with the orange at the top and this serrations here so the light doesn't uh, go in your eyes when the sun comes up to stop glare you've got the front sight that's adjustable for windage and elevation at the back the newer model dash 6 any one between the dash 4 to dash 6 has extra holes under it for weaver mounts and uh, scope optics and stuff. This is the uh, before the number four, so it uh, doesn't have the pre drilled and tapped for optics. So you would have to get that done by a gunsmith to uh, drill and tap it to be able to fit one on there. And uh, these go from anywhere to five hundred to a thousand dollars in Australia. This is the other side. It's got Smith and Weston. The little windage screw. It's got the stamp on here that says made in the USA, Smith and Weston. It's a little badge. It's a double action, single action revolver. You can see the act moving your thumb on the thumb rest here, moving it back. The pre lock ones have the firing pin on the hammer, or else it would be inside the frame here. And this would be flat, and there will be that pin right here. As it strikes it, it will hit it. But this has the firing pin on the hammer. The single action trigger pull it is so light, as you can see this is a reset right at the end pretty much. You see the cylinder rotates on every shot. Double action just by pulling the trigger. The cylinder rotates to the next round and goes off. Inside the revolver here you can see all the uh, carbon up the top here when the round fires. You can see the, the cuts in the side here for when the cylinder rides on this top bit here. It also has the cylinder rod ejector by pushing on it. It pushes the rounds out. 
and see that's where the firing pin comes in. This is where it locks up on in here. You've got the cone here at the top. Gets a lot of carbon and everything, as you can see up the top here. It's a fair bit of carbon and stuff. And on the face, cylinder face, it's all black. To get this off, you would use the lead removal cloth, and it normally comes out back to a stainless finish. These take the 357 Magnum case, this is one I prepared, it's a live round, it's a 158 uh, flat point round nose, and this is the operation, this is what it looks like in the chamber, and when ejecting it will come out as so. These revolvers are very reliable and hardly ever jam. These on the Gen 6 ones, these have a little screw on the side here that also is a safety feature. This has a lot of safety features as well, but I may bite. As the cylinder's open, you can't move the hammer or pull the trigger. It has to be in before you can move it which is pretty handy so you don't cock it while you're trying to load the gun I have speed loaders comp 3 safari landers to do quick reloads by just pushing them in and it's forcing them into the cylinders it's not a moon clip version where they cut this middle bit out so then and you can uh, use the metal clips that go in there and you don't have to use the speed loader just drop straight in you can close the cylinder with it in it and when it t you take it out all the the whole thing comes out with the six rounds at the same time so you don't have to individually get them out they get stuck sometimes you move it and this grip here the rounds get stuck on the corner depending on what grips you have, mostly the Hoag grips might do that the original ones seem to be okay so yeah you can get any grips you like, this is a square butt frame it has a square here so the old wooden grips that they had that come over a bit more the Hoag rubber grips are what are the standard now they a more rubber, a bit more of a finger groove. You can get all sorts of stuff now, like the zombie grips as well for the round frame. They're just the bright green with the glow in the dark. You can get different uh, sights. You can get night sights for these. You can get the white outlined ones, and you can get different front sights and fiber optics instead of having just a normal orange front these are very customizable guns you can get different barrels swapped out for your smiths you can get any sort of design you want and you can get round barrels you can this is just the you can get half lugs where that's cut off like you've seen it's just the barrel. I'm using this for my IPSC gun, my metallic silhouette gun, and my ISU gun, so it does three different things. And also, cowboy, even though it's not a single action gun only. I call myself the modern cowboy and have the modern revolvers of our time. And I find that would probably be, be a bit more fun. Um, I'll be using this in competition on March 30th, so you'll see the video of me with shooting this revolver. 
uh, as an IPSC match. You might see me struggling a bit. Um, it's the first time I've ever done a match with a revolver, and so I'm not sure how to speed reload real quick. And I'll work on that um, throughout the years if I own it for that long. This is really nice. I find that this is better than the GP100. It's not really a comparison video, but I find the GP100 a lot heavier. The trigger pulls a lot more heavier, harder to control. I find the Smith is just a thinner version that fits your hand and uh, is very light and the trigger pull is just so nice and it works um, I'll show you something uh, I've got this 50 cow round and this uh, I've found out that this 50 cow round is about the same length as the barrel so just a bit over 6 inches from the bottom here, which is pretty crazy. You can see here the trigger guard and side plate here is on located on this side with screws underneath here. There's one here, one here, and one here. I've recently taken it apart and cleaned it. First time I ever took the side plate off here. It was a bit dirty. Um, it's pretty technical inside here, so I tried to not move anything. And it was uh, a bit hard to put the side plate back on. But the trick is to use the top side first by placing it in that side and then gently trying to push the sides down without trying to squash it and then putting the screws in it tightens it up to make it all flush because I couldn't get any more flush because it's so precisely machined that it wouldn't go in place properly but this is a very lucky buy for me it was pretty cheap for a revolver, but this will last years, and this is what the South Australian police used to use um, before they moved to the MMP model 40 cows. They carried around these Smith and Weston uh, distinguished revolvers in the six inch, and uh, yeah, that's pretty pretty cool. You can get other custom stuff done to revolvers. You can get the scrolling that you've seen, different uh, cylinders. So you can get instead of the this bit here cut out, you can get a flat cylinder for them, which just completely round like that, without that in there. This is for it saves some weight and it cools the barrel down a bit more on the flutings. So get an unfluted cylinder, you can get cylinders with little pictures of bear prints on them, that's on other guns. You can get uh, parts here, your hammer, you can get that diamond plate look, which I like. The possibilities are endless with Smiths, they're so well known and so well reliable and parts are easier to get but here in Australia they're a bit, a bit harder because we have to import everything and we need special permission from customs and all that to get parts in so it will take a while we'll see how this works See the 50 cow there holding it up.
thanks for watching and uh, subscribe.